In this video, me and the third officer will show you around what all fire equipments we have on board and what we do in case there's a fire. Why did we join the merchant? What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have the privilege of having our third officer on board and let's first introduce him. Hello guys, myself third officer Vidant and I am here on board this big ship Munke Bombers. So today along with my senior Karanveer Nayar, I will be showing you the primary duties of myself on board and along with that the secondary duties like firefighting appliances. And don't forget to watch this video till the end because we are going to ask him very important questions like what are the toughest experiences he's had on board and most importantly what are some important tips and tricks for a first time third officer joining on the ship. So guys, as a third officer, my primary job is safe navigation of a ship that is I do 8 hours, morning 8 to 12 and evening 8 to 12 and the remaining 2 hours I go and maintain all the firefighting appliances. So guys, see you with the firefighting appliances on deck. Before we go down to the deck, We'll quickly change into our coveralls, so see you back. So Vedant, this ship is very very big. So how do you go about, how do you find the location of each fire equipment on board? So on ships, on every ship you will find a plan called a fire control and safety plan where you will find the location with the symbols of all the firefighting appliances the fire hydrant, nozzles, SCB asset, fireman outfit on each location, on each platform it is marked very clearly so it is very easy to find the location just go there and check it we will go to each particular location of the ship and show them what equipment exactly we have because all the equipments are under his responsibility for maintenance and orders etc so it will be very beneficial for you all also to know that how firefighting is carried on board. Without further ado, let's proceed to the fire control station and we'll see all the major firefighting equipment on board located here which will help us in fighting a fire in case we have a fire on board. in an orderly manner and cover as much as possible. Let's start with international shore connection. So this international shore connection is an equipment we use when we have to take water for firefighting when we are in port. Next we come to the CO2 release system. These are the two release systems for cargo hold and engine room fire where we have the nitrogen bottles to release the CO2. One of the most crucial parts of a firefighting team we have the fireman outfit and the SCBA set over here which a fireman wears when he has to go and fight fire in the firefighting team. So as we saw earlier, we had the CO2 release system. Here we have the levers for the CO2 release that after release, we can transfer the CO2 to the cargo hold. Why we need to use CO2? Basically because CO2 first of all cuts off one part of the fire triangle that is the oxygen part. Secondly, we use this so that in case when we are not able to suppress the fire while firefighting or other means, then that is used as the last resort to uh, to control the fire. Here we have the container firefighting equipment dedicatedly only for container fires. Here we have two bags. One is called the fast attack bag as you can see. We have the storage bag which has the additional equipment for fighting a container fire. 
So Vedant, can we open these and uh, let the viewers also see what yeah, exactly is happening? We will open one. Here we can see a bag. Yeah, this is the first bag that is called the fast attack bag. And here we have plenty of equipment over here. Starting with the drill drill machine that is used to drill a hole in the container. Then we have the spare batteries over here. We have drill chucks and we have hoses and we have different equipment where we can fight a container fire using either water or CO2. As we saw in the fire plant where we have all the location of extinguishers, here we have the spares. In case we use one extinguisher or we need to use more extinguisher, here we have the CO2 spares, we have the DCP spares and we have one wet chemical spare. So Vedad, can you just tell us in brief what all each extinguisher is used for? Yeah, sure. So the CO2 extinguisher, mainly it is used for electrical fire, the DCP extinguisher, for any other type of fire and the wet chemical one only in our galley and it is used for oil fires. Okay. So what we'll do now is let's go to the galley yeah. because there are many firefighting equipments there yes. and many causes of fire originate from the galley yes, because, yes, because of cooking and cooking cooking and yeah. oil. So let's proceed there. Hello guys. Hey guys! Hey guys! Hey guys! guys! Hey 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 guys! It's okay? Okay, please. All right. Thank you. All right, Vidal, let's proceed with the, what all equipments we have here. So first we have one of the most important things in Galley is the chemical deep fat fryer. So here is the deep fat fryer where we have a lot of oil. So in case of an oil fire, this can be activated. The chem wet chemical like we saw in extinguisher, similarly this will come on top on the fire. It will cut off the oxygen again, which will cause the fire to suppress. Next, we have the fire blanket. Fire blanket can be used to uh, support. While chief cook preparing food, he gets fire on board. Fire blanket can be put on him, so fire will be dosed. Again, we have the CO2 extinguisher and the wet chemical extinguisher as I showed you in the spare. Let's go to the release mechanism. Inside here, we have the wet chemical system. And over here, this handle has to be pulled to release the wet chemical on top of the oil fire. Here, we have the CO2 bottles to release the CO2 in the galley dump. Let's move on. We have finished with galley and now we'll go to the main deck. Let's go guys. Here we are on deck. At every interval we have various fire hoses and these fire hoses are used to fight any fire on deck. Here we have a nozzle, we have a hose and we have the spanner to tighten the nozzle and to the high hose to the hydrants. Here we have the hydrant and this hydrant we connect the hose over here and this is the uh, handle to release. Once you open the handle, water will fill the hose and then you can fight the fire with water. Okay and guys also if you see there are two other valves, this is for air on deck used for chipping and this blue color is for fresh water so mostly on the regular intervals on deck you will find all three valves at uh, every location. So Vedan this is a lot of work can you tell us exactly how much time it takes you for all of this and how do you plan all this? So guys um, every day from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the afternoon I come and as per the planned maintenance schedule and as per my safety task schedule I do all the jobs, I do all the maintenance and I do all my weekly and monthly checks. As we know, this is a very big ship. So in our company, we have like third officer has only the FFA part as compared to other companies where we have FFA and LSA both. On this big ship, even though it is only FFA, but still because of too many firefighting equipments on board, it is an everyday job and it takes a lot of time to maintain them, to check them, to regularly do our jobs on them. <laughs> I am very happy that this FFA is off my shoulders now. <laughs> LSA has come but LSA still is not as much because in FFA you have to go lashing bridges everywhere and it is a lot of physically demanding work. So yes, uh, I agree, it yeah, is a lot of physical lot exertion. Lot of physical exertion so now I have become a bit uh, lazy on the bridge and just near the And I am waiting for this day. <laughs> he is waiting for this day. Let's proceed to the engine room because as we know engine room fires 
are very common and because of all the oil and all the running machinery so we'll see all the firefighting equipment in engine room the engine room over here is in the aft of the ship that is around 150 meters from the accommodation that is why it took us such a long time to come to the engine room Welcome to the engine control room of the ship. Now engine room is a very important part because it is a hot spot. It is all the time hot and there is oil flowing around. So most of the fires originate from here. So let's see what the third officer has here for his maintenance for firefighting equipment. And as I see Vedant over here, there is some CO2 alarm written in big words. What exactly is there? Can you tell us about some, something about that? Guys, the CO2 alarm, as we already saw in the fire control station, we can release CO2 in case we have a fire in engine room or cargo hold. So when we hear the CO2 alarm, the moment you hear the CO2 alarm, you have to immediately escape from the engine room. And while escaping, we have to use the EBD. The EBD is an escape device. It is not to be used for firefighting. As you can see, we have one EBD over here. This is our EBD over here. So this EBD has to be taken once you are escape when you are escaping the engine room. So that's how it looks inside. So suppose there's a new joiner who has joined the ship and has first time on like triple E class or E class ship. So Vedan, how will he get to know where is the equipment, how to be trained for that? So do you have something for that? Yeah. As we can so see, the location was in the fire control and safety plan. But how to use the equipment? If I am a first timer, I don't know how to use this. So how will we use the equipment? Here we have a fire training manual which indicates the procedure of how to descri it describes the procedure how to use each and every equipment. This is our fire training manual over here. And uh, where all is the location of this? The fire training manual is located as we are in ECR. It is in ECR. It is on bridge. It is in deck office and in other common places like the dining saloon, the crew day room, the officer saloon. Okay, we'll proceed now to all the places in the engine room which are hot spots for fire and see what firefighting equipment we have on board to fight those fires. So guys, while we were proceeding, we felt hungry and we found these biscuits. So Vedant is already speaking too much, so I told him take some energy and because engine room is a big space and we have to cover a lot. This is the boiler of the ship. It is the hottest place and to fight fire we have DCP 25 kg extinguishers unlike the conventional 12 kg extinguishers and these are two over here and there is a third one over there behind the boiler which we will go and have a look now. Here we have the third 25 kg DCP extinguisher same purpose to fight the fire with the hose attached over here. Let's go to the purifier room. This is the purifier room. All the oil coming to the machinery comes through here. So here is a very big hot spot for all the oil fire on board in the engine room. Therefore to fight oil fires we need liquid foam. So therefore we have the foam applicator here lying outside the purifier room. Here we have the foam applicator. As you can see this is a big container. Here are the month. How I check two containers, the foam applicator and the fire hose that is always with the foam applicator to fight any oil fire. Before we proceed further, just a disclaimer that the engine right now is shut and we are at anchor. That is why we are not wearing our safety plugs, ear plugs. Otherwise, it is mandatory to wear that. And on that note, let's ask third officer Vedant what will happen if there is a fire on the main engine. We have two main engines on this ship. So this is the this is one of the engines, and this generates a lot of heat. There is fuel coming here. This is also one of the key hotspots for fire. In case we have a fire over here. We have water mist systems and CO2 system to fight this fire. 
So this is the water mesh system as you see mark in the blue and if we go further you see the red red nozzle over there that will release the CO2 So all our firefighting equipment stores spares are received through this skylight as you see and there's a crane to pick them up and then we lower them onto the stores room so let's proceed to the stores room This place behind me is the store room of the engine room and all our firefighting spares are received here and from here we have to transfer it all the way to the accommodation which will go next. This is the workshop of our ship. If I have to repair any hydrant or isolation wall, I bring it here, repair it and then I fix it back to its original position. Now we'll go to our safety locker where I'll show you all the spares of the firefighting appliances kept and en route we'll see the nitrogen bottles and where i fill my extinguishers in case they are depressurized these are the nitrogen bottles for filling my dcp extinguishers so we have very bad news that the elevator is not working and we have to go all the way up to the top deck <laughs> That was a long way up. Oh, let's go to the ACR first. Have some biscuits. Some biscuits again. Oh. <laughs> yes. Takes a lot of energy to shoot these videos, guys. So we started in the morning and it's already night time and we have still some things to cover. This is the garbage room of the ship. Here also we have some extinguishers and here we have the fresh water firefighting system over here. Over there, yeah. Sprinkler system. Okay. Let's go to paint store. Yeah. Another hot spot for fire because we have all the flammable solutions kept over here. Even one spark and it can cause a big explosion. So therefore, we have these sprinkler systems over here, and fresh water, salt water comes from here, and that can be activated from outside. Let's go outside and have a look at that. This is the wall. We open and the salt water directly goes through the line and we get, and the water it reduces the heat as we saw in the fire triangle and therefore extinguishes the fire. Our safety locker where we keep all our spares for the firefighting and life saving equipment as well. As we saw the nitrogen bottles in engine room for filling our DCP extinguisher. Here we have the BA compressor. It is used for filling our SCBA bottles when we are doing firefighting. These are our chemical suits which we use in case we have a chemical spill anywhere on ship. We have to wear these, we have to wear a SCBA set and then we have to go and clean the chemicals. So guys, these are the BA bottles which Vedant was telling you which are filled up over here. Here we have all the spares, the dry chemical powder, the spares for all the firefighting equipment are kept over here. And the spares for the life saving equipment are kept over here, which is managed by our experienced and excellent mm. second officer. Yes. <laughs> so, do like, share, and subscribe to his videos. That's the way. <laughs> Alright, guys, so this was more or less the entire firefighting equipment we have on board. Many other things also, but they are inside the cargo holds or etc. So, we cannot access it directly. Now, we'll go inside the accommodation and ask Vedant a few important questions. So, let's proceed there. So Vedan, thanks for this lovely tour. It was indeed tiring and uh, I was a third also on this ship so I know it is quite a lot of responsibility. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, before we close the video, let's ask you a few important questions. Sure. First is what is the toughest equipment you think which is to maintain? The toughest equipment according to me would be the SCBA set which I think is even the most important equipment on board. 
The toughest part is that it is a very delicate and a very critical equipment. It has very small parts and even if one part is misplaced from its place, it will fail. Also, the pressure inside 300 bars. Yes, I sorry, I forgot. The yeah. pressure inside 300 bars. Sure. If anywhere it is le- leaking or the line is loose or anything, the air will come out at 300 bar, which can be dangerous also. Yeah, no chance of survival. Yeah. It's more right. bar too much. More right. So, Vedant, uh, next is like, uh, how do you manage to, you know, uh, uh, take care of navigation as well as FFA, does it play on your mental, uh, does it give you stress of ha- handling so much of this uh, equipment, is it stressful? To be honest, the first time I was doing it, yes, I found it a little bit difficult to manage because yes, my primary, as I said, primary job is navigation and cannot shift my focus from that. But once I start getting used to it, uh, I have found better ways to manage my time, better ways to actually start maintaining them and while keeping my focus on navigation. So now that I'm used to it, I think time management is the main key for proper maintenance as well as keeping your focus on your primary job. That's a very good point, Medan. The next question I have is like uh, any important tips for new joiners like cadets who are going to become officers and they're joining their first ship. So something which you want to share with them. So for cadets, uh, it's basically follow the third officer, learn as much as you can. And not only third officer, I would suggest follow the second officer also, follow the chief officer also, learn as much as you can. And once you get newly promoted and come as first and third mate, make sure that all equipment is in good order. If you don't know something, if you don't know how to maintain it, ask someone, look up in the manual, don't just be a lost case, I would suggest. Try to better yourself every day and make sure that you are not competing with anyone of your batchmates, but you are competing with yourself. That is a very good point Vedant. I mean, uh, the competing with yourself is the most important thing. You have to challenge yourself for your own growth yes, rather than competing, like you said, with the other batchmates. And most important takeaway was ask for help. Don't fill a BA bottle without the proper instructions because it can kill you. Like he said, 300 bars, it will come and kill you and you have no chance of surviving that. So that is very important takeaway from this. Last question is, yes. why did you join the Merchant Navy? As, <laughs> as we know, <laughs> as we were told, as, as, we have, as many of you would have read on the internet and as you, you would have seen from current years vlog, shoulders, you have place, yes. you sometimes get a lot of shoulders, you get to see new places. And yes, that was my main reason. To join Merchant Navy because to be honest in my family no one is in Merchant Navy. But once I joined, I realized that it's all on the paper that you get a lot of short leaves and everything. But because you are working every day and as junior officers, there is a lot of workload and you have to manage your time well to make sure that you enjoy and work equally. That's the reality put by him and I cannot deny the same fact. Surely you've seen yes, but the six on six off, especially for he and for me and him, we are dead tired and we prefer just to get our rest for our own safety. So Vedant, thank you once again. You're welcome. And uh, by the way, for do- those who don't know, Vedant is my junior from Tulani. He's from Tulani as well. And you can follow him in his Instagram links, which I'll put here. If you have any doubts about the third officer job or something, so he might be able to assist you. Always welcome to assist. Always welcome. He's a very helpful guy. So definitely stay in contact with him. For now, if you did like the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell button. Nice. So thank you, Vedant. You're welcome. See you later. See you later. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is behind the scene <laughs> for all the shooters. <laughs>